looks like on a situation like this. There's plenty of racetrack out there, but the groove isn't as wide as maybe you'd like it to be. If the car starts dancing around down there 500 feet on, it's probably better to come back tomorrow. Yep. Stevie Jackson told me when I uh, when I first started driving in Pro Mod that if you're driving it past the eighth mile, you are going to crash, and he's right. If you're still driving that thing hard out there, it is not going to end well. Yeah, what does he know? A little late coming to life, but it did. We're talking about J.R. Gray in lane number two. Let's start in lane number one. Kevin Rivenbark driving the Tidwell Motorsports Machine Q80. Pro line racing powered. Currently the number five qualifier. J.R. Gray just got bumped out. The last car is going down a racetrack, so he finds himself in the number 17 spot. Tricky Ricky Smith out of King, North Carolina. That is the only nitrous car trying to compete here. You can see the nitrous purge taking place down there in lane number three. And Manny Bajinga, over there in the lane number four out of Massachusetts, really well known in the small tire and grudge world, but he came over here and looked like he made a pretty, pretty quick adaptation down in Gainesville. Yeah, a really good driver. Manny, a great guy, and that's, uh, that is the Todd Tuttero owned YO Motorsports Camaro over there that, that Manny is driving this weekend. It's great to see Todd, Ty, and the entire YO team out here uh, back in NHRA Pro Mod. Todd, obviously one of the most successful and the best ever do it. And it's uh, it, it's weird to see him behind the car doing the tuning and not doing the driving, but uh, nonetheless, it's good to have him out. You know, it was kind of the same thing when Mike Janis was told by the doctor, you need to take a step back. Seeing him, just try to figure out where I'm supposed to stand when I'm not the one in the car. Uh, as, as being that this is Todd's business, um, you know, and he said it before the year started, he's just going to take a step back, really focus on his customer base, which is growing rapidly. Todd runs um, a really good program over there, and especially in the PDRA with Kurt Stedding and the P2 contracting guys. He's got customers across the nation, so it's uh, it's cool to see Todd uh, kind of taking a different role. As they stand right now, Riffenbark number five, J.R. Gray not qualified, Ricky Smith not qualified, Manny Bajinga not qualified. Ricky's car makes a hard move towards the center line. He shuts her down. We've only got one that's wide open in the stripe, and that's going to be J.R. Gray. 5.811, 233 miles an hour. Speed down a little bit. Rivenbark shows a 5.77. I have to look at that again. Well, Rivenbark was late on reaction time. That's why I was watching. It looked like he was so far behind. Rivenbark moves up to number two. J.R. Gray goes into the number four position. A 9.22 for Ricky Smith pushing the center line. Manny goes 6.15. Watch this one more time. Lane one. Yeah, he sat on the bulb a little bit when I was watching the cars down the racetrack. Rivenbark looked like he was far enough behind. I was thinking he's having a problem, but the problem was he just didn't hit the tree very well. That doesn't bite you in qualifying, but you got to make sure you got your concentration in place by race day. Yeah, and and then the four wides, if you can keep your wits about you up there and, and can leave the starting line on time, it is a big advantage four wide. I always thought that, especially in the turbo car, being that I was already ready to go when I turned my bottom bulb on, that I had an advantage and I tend to do pretty well leaving the starting line. Now, Chris Thorne and I did not show that in the final last year. I think I was 150 and he was 330 or something leaving. But uh, but yeah, if you can if you can keep your wits about you on the starting line here, you've got.